came in that Welch's is a, a client here. Uh, I want to tell you um, something. I hope we can speak in some confidence here. Um, and that's uh, that um, this PB and J uh, product that they have is horrible. You should instantaneously stop Easy. representing it because my family is single-handedly being bankrupted by, by buying it. Um, I want to, uh, I'm joined here by three colleagues who have disappeared here. I've got Bay Penn, Lali Ayakoglu, and Sarah Kennedy here. Um, who are three of the top editors of The Observer, and I, I, I wanted to bring them because uh, I, I want, uh, I hear from a lot of you guys already, I, I see some faces I know in this room, um, you know, I hear from Ron every 11 minutes, um, <laughs> but I, I, want, I want you to know, um, just as I'm impressed when I walk into a room like this and I, I see all these, you know, bright, eager people, uh, with lots of clients, that there there's a lot of people at the Observer. Where you know, just as the rest of the news business is disinvesting in the, the grubby business of gathering news, we we have been investing. Hopefully, you all saw the news last week uh, that the Observer bought Source Media, which is American Banker and Bond Buyer and several other hundred-year-old titles. It, it gives us a huge new footprint in a lot of trades. And the Observer itself is growing like crazy. So before I introduce you to some of those changes, I want to apologize to you all um, for uh, stealing so much of Mr. Trosian's attention. The guy's the most prolific essayist since Thomas Paine. It's uh, unbelievable how this output is like Joyce Carol Oates already. Um, but uh, he's, he's turned into uh, a real voice at the Observer. Um, and. Uh, I don't know if I have permission yet to call him a friend, but we, we certainly enjoy talking through the issues of the day. We're passionate about some of the same topics. So uh, what I was hoping to do uh, in the 15 minutes I've been allotted is to sort of tell you what's going on at the Observer. I invite you all to, I, I hate to show my back up, I do my little speech in the round. But uh, uh, what, I, what I hope to do is, is to sort of reintroduce the Observer. I'm, I'm no longer new there. I became the editor-in-chief January 1st of 2013, so it's been 19 months already. Um, but what had been allowed to happen is over the, the really honorable and wonderful 25-year history up till that point of the Observer, is the Observer became rightfully known for throwing a vicious left hook, but not as not as well known um, for for uh, for lauding things that were great about the city we share, and so I've been kind of doing doing some of these, going to different PR agencies. I, I value the work you guys do as partners. I try to be really respectful and not just you know press the auto spam button uh, on it um, because I value the work you do, and, and uh, I can think of at least two stories, I'm not sure I'm, I'm authorized to share which ones they were, but I can think of at least two, two really big observer hits um, we've had that have come directly from this agency. Um, and so I, I view our, our publicists, or at least good publicists, as, as partners, um, not, not adversaries. Um, to me, that, that, that means trying to be helpful, instructing, um, instructing PR people on, on what's what's likely to get our attention. It, it, we do get pitched constantly, all day long. You know, a, a paper that's committed to print, that's in every single Starbucks in the city, that has 62,000 circulation, that includes the, the single richest um, demographic of anyone who's, who's an audited newspaper. We get pitched constantly, it's, and so much of it is not anything we'd ever consider covering, that it is a waste of time. It's a waste of time for whoever went to the trouble of writing the pitch and a waste of our time but a carefully crafted pitch that's thoughtful about a way that we could use the story and sort of reflects knowledge of the different different verticals we, we have and cover is, is useful to me. So um, I think everybody has probably at this point seen what, what I'm still thinking of as the new Observer because in my head the Observer is pink and it's got 12 or 14 stories on the front page and it's sort of this lovable mess and that's, that's something that I've always adored about the paper but it was something that was clearly not working in, in the, the modern media field where it's so hard to get anyone to pay attention to anything that when you had a whole mess of stories, it, it was like if you're about everything, you're about nothing. So we, we made this very conscious decision to change to, um, 
to a, a size that was more acceptable to our advertisers, but more importantly than that, a focus. So when you when you pick up this week's Observer, you know what the hell we're talking about. It's not 12 stories. It's you got the U.S. Open here. You, you, you pick up this Observer. Um, TM is becoming uh, a trend even among the, the wealthiest and most powerful people in our, our city. Pick up this observer. You can love him or hate him, but you know this is this is going to be a Woody Allen issue, and and that's that's really what we're we're trying to do. And we within that uh, format, we've got tons and tons of great stories. And the same the same story makes we didn't we didn't kill any. We actually did kill some minor uh, things, but we we have more editorial space now than we ever have, and that's even getting better because we're selling a lot more advertising. And ultimately, the amount of stuff we can cover is driven by the amount of advertising. We try really hard to have about a page of edit for a page of advertising. So if we've got 28 pages of edit, we're going to have, I mean, of advertising, we're going to have 28 pages of, of edit to tell great stories, including stories that it, uh, include your clients. So that's the, that's the biggest shift that's happened to the Observer in a long time is the, um, is the change in format. We also changed our color. Um, a lot of people had this, this sort of residual love for the salmon colored paper, but they weren't the ones who had to truck it from Washington State, which is the last remaining paper mill that made it. And they weren't the ones that had to listen to NYU or Tiffany say, we just, we'd love to advertise with you, but we can't because our purple or our special blue won't, won't print correctly in your paper. And so in, in an environment where it, it's, there's a lot of pressure if you want to be a print publication, got to do things that are, that are painful in order to, to sustain yourself. And, and the Observer's commitment to great journalism and great writing is, um, is alive and well because we've, we've made these tough choices. We've, we've introduced new advertisers, um, like something like 11 new advertisers since we made this, this switch in March. And we've got some really big and exciting ones um, who have advertised in the Observer for the first time in history coming in, in the fourth quarter. Um, so uh, another thing, another point I wanted to make um, about the Observer is, is we consider it, we consider ourselves like a, a, a sort of a local paper for the biggest and most exciting city in the world. Um, and New York's not the, not the biggest by population, but it is the biggest by, by the amount of oxygen consumed in, in, people's, in people's minds. And we, we consider ourselves the, the local paper of, of that scene. So if there are people doing incredibly interesting things in, in any space, that, that's an observer story. So you know, it's, it's really hard when writers come and say, what's an observer story? I, I, I kind of try not to give them the old, you know, the Potter Stewart type of, I know it when I see an answer. But if it, if it involves something that is hard to picture happening anywhere else but New York, um, such as the U.S. Open or, or you know, a billionaire like Dan Loeb taking 45 minutes a day to do transcendental meditation or Woody Allen. That's, a, that's an observer story. So I, what, I'm, what I'm hoping to do is have Faye Penn join as well and also talk about specifically what's a story. Faye is our executive editor um, and uh, does more than, than really anybody else to put the physical newspaper out. But before I do, the last point I want to make, before I have Faye come and talk about what a New York observer story is, Last point I want to make is that really where the growth is uh, in inside our building is online. We are knocking at the door, um, and this is all verifiable if you have chart B or podcast. We're knocking at the door of, of five million units a month, which is huge growth uh, in the time I've been uh, editor, and that's that's a very important milestone for our, our company, for our brand, because. There are certain national advertisers who, who sort of you can't even get a meeting with them unless you can supply you know the volume of, of uh, views they, they need, and that's that's one of those those big ones. Um, we're about to cross it. We're starting to get those meetings. Um, we're starting to get advertising online that's commensurate with the incredible traffic growth we've had. You know uh, packages that are, are sold specifically for us, where they do those whole takeovers, and it's, it's like a branded um, opportunity. So that's, that's where we're growing the fastest, and we're, we're investing like crazy. Our, our CEO, um, Joseph Meyer, is, is extremely committed to online growth. We've put a ton of resources into all of the, we're hiring a lot. We've hired a chief technologist. We've hired a social media editor who's terrific. We've hired uh, a designer who's just on the web instead of, oh, let's take this newspaper story and kind of dress it up for the web. We've, we've, we've done a lot of stuff to, to make it clear we're, we're fighting like crazy in, in that space. So if you've got stories that 
you think, well, this doesn't quite fit in a, you know, in a newspaper with 28 to 32 pages of content. Um, bear in mind that we, it's not, it's not a, a disc to be published on on the web by the observer. That that, that goes to a, a ton more readers than, than even the best read story in the paper can ever reach. Um, and we've got verticals that are online only, such as Beta Beat. Um, you guys cover a lot of tech companies. Even even hearing uh, Ron talk about the you know the Uber of private jets. Um, that's that's the kind of thing we have covered and, and will cover on our beta beat vertical. Um, commercial real estate stories. We have the leading newspaper, the trade trade paper of the commercial real estate industry, the Commercial Observer. So if you've got clients who are doing big lease deals and you know signing big tenants and things like that, we won't, we want to hear about it. We'll break that news and we'll do it in a way that, that none of our peers can match because we've got the, the writerly quality to put together you know 1,200 word profile with beautiful photography that is. Um, like catnip to these guys who are doing amazing things to reshape the the look of our city, but but find it hard to get themselves covered. So um, I'm hoping Faye will join and talk about what we'll make them for the story. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ken, and. Uh uh, thanks for having us here today, and uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. Chirosian, on assembling what uh, so far I have ascertained is the best-looking um, <laughs> company in New York. It's an intimidating new year, but <laughs> forge ahead. Um, I don't have tons to add to what I think Ken put really well, not just because he's my boss. Um, I think an element. These are the elements that I look for in uh, an observer story. I'm concerned. You know, there are lots of places to be in the paper, but I'm just going to talk about features. Uh, right now, which are the two sort of major spots in the paper. There's the cover story, and then we have one or two other sort of like 1,500 to 2,000 word read. Um, in that spot, we're looking for something that is uh, surprising, something that's a yarn, something that's a good story to tell. Um, it should have elements of uh, money and power, because we're New York and we're the Observer, and um, it doesn't there are exceptions to that, but that's really our wheelhouse. Um, there should be um, characters in it. There should be, um, it could be a trend story, it could be a profile, it could be um, a news story, it could be a really strong opinion piece. It could be, um, you know, I, what, are, what am I missing there? It could be a first person narrative, but really it's just a, it's a story of some significance, and it's best if it says something about the way we live now in New York City. You know, somebody pitched me a story, and I declined it, and it wound up in the Times. And he said to me, well, you know, here, the Times liked it. I said, okay, so it was in the art section of the Times, which is great in the art section where they have 20 stories. We have two to three stories an issue. It's got to be, you know, on the level of, we're looking at it as, you know, um, a big story about New York. You know, and stories that might make the art section of other papers or, you know, spe more specialized stories probably aren't going to make that cut. But please, you know, try us. We, we love to work with you guys on developing some of these great, you know, stories for us. And if you don't see it immediately, we can, we're, we're happy to have a conversation and a dialogue about, you know, cooking this stuff up. The luxury our, our style too, editor yeah. is Sarah Kennedy. Um, and we, we have really... That's so nice. <laughs> We really put uh, put a lot of resources into creating a style section, and we've attracted great new advertisers. So I, I wonder if you could say the same. Yeah. Um, essentially, um, um, I, I joined the Observer six months ago, and um, I come from a consumer magazine background. Um, but you know, <coughs> the style section is all about the lifestyle of people living in New York, and um, so there's fashion in there. There's how people look. There's fitness. There's trends. Um, there's all sorts of different aspects to lifestyle in New York, but it's more than just interior decor or food. It's kind of going down to the, the style of how New Yorkers with money, with a bit of panache, you know, with an easy means of getting around the city, you know, what do they do and where do they go? What do they spend their money on? And um, so I was interested to hear actually when we walked in that you mentioned a private jet client. So, for instance, on our um, vertical recently on the Style Channel, we had um, a story about a private jet company and it got huge traffic. It was about two weeks ago and one of the interns wrote it up from a press release and it was just a really good hook. And I just said, let's, let's just do that over the weekend, get it up. And it, and it, and it had huge traffic. So um, sometimes there are surprising hits on style. 
but also we're looking at all the stuff that people are interested in, such as fashion. So fashion week's coming up in two weeks' time. We focus a lot on New York-based designers. It's all about what New Yorkers will buy at the shows, you know, the designers that New Yorkers follow, not necessarily the same as the rest of the world. Um, and what we're trying to do is bring a backstory to all those big brands um, in New York, you know, a New York relevant backstory to say Louis Vuitton or Balmain. You know, so 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 basically that's that's what we aim to do at Style and with a lot of good stories, like Faith said, same criteria, you know, we'll have a big story each week in style. Big for style is kind of two pages, it's not the same as perhaps in the features well. But you know, it'll explore the background, some kind of hook, angle that perhaps people can 